God is is vast. He is he's huge. Um, increasingly, I'm beginning to recognise the different facets of his character and his personality. If there is one characteristic that I am reflecting on a lot is his justice, and I think that has been kind of kind of exacerbated in part because of the murder of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matters movement. I am so aware more now than ever before that God is completely committed to people who are on the margins of society, uh, people who have been disenfranchised for years, um, black people in particular, disenfranchised and, and knocked in the teeth and, um, for centuries. And I am more aware now that God is on the side of the oppressed and he is so much on the side of those who weep and those who lament. And I am becoming more aware as I reflect upon the character of God that as, as we lament, um, or when I say we um, referencing our race, that God laments with us. And when we weep, God weeps with us. And when we break because of the racialization that we too often experience, um, that God stands in our space, he stands, stands in our midst. He's not neutral, he's certainly not on the outside, he's not objective, he participates in our suffering, um, in our grief. Um, he is always there. So what does, what does worship mean? I think in that context, um, worship does does mean that we worship a God who is, who is obviously all-knowing and is all-being, but we also worship a God who is completely compassionate, um, who, is, who is on the side of the other. Um, and, and we worship a God who, who, yes, is compassionate, but fully understands the, the travails that we experience, and sometimes on a daily basis. And, and that's the God, the God who is near, is the God, the God I love, and is, is the God I worship. Um, he has created this, um, but he lives within this as well. And he has created humanity in his image, um, and he understands fully and totally what he has, what he has created. That, that, that compels me to to worship him, um, yet at the same time knowing that there is a lot of mess in the world, um, yet living alongside that mess um, is the presence of God. You can do none other but, but worship a God who is like that. You know where, where, where Jesus says, I think it's to the Pharisees, um, you know, don't, don't kind of stand in the street corners and, and pray um, relentlessly. Um, and, and that's not because prayer is not important, obviously prayer is, 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 is incredibly important. Um, but there is a sense in which it's easy to pray you know, it's easy to articulate our frustrations and uh, our, our, our pointers to God, knowing full well that God is obviously listening. Um, but I think God, God also expects a sacrifice from us where, where we are willing to sacrifice ourselves and give ourselves to others. And obviously we see this you know, powerfully demonstrated in the cross, um, in the atonement. Um, the word becomes flesh. Jesus dies upon the cross for us, um, for, for broken humanity. Important then for us as Christian people to, to find ways of actually exemplifying that as well, um, which will often mean 
us walking with the other, us making sacrifices um, with the other, um, us demonstrating our commitment to Jesus, not just simply in words, in prayer and in song, but embodying ourselves literally with the realities and the pain of what other people are going through. I, I think that's what Jesus calls us to do. That's not to um, undermine things like prayer and other things like that. Again, they are incredibly important. But there is something about living with the other. Um, and, and surely that is, is what Jesus calls us to do. The fact that we now have to do so much stuff outside of the four walls um, of church by virtue of the fact that COVID-19 obviously prevents us from going into a physical building, um, I think provides us with plenty of creative and innovative ways um, of doing church. Surely it must suggest that we can do church comfortably outside of the four walls um, and surely it also suggests that we have a God who lives very comfortably outside of the four walls and and has has done always has done and it's now about us catching up with God so to speak it reinforces the importance of of social justice so for example John Bunyan Baptist Church we share the church building with an organisation called um, ArcT, and ArcT um, have a cafe, um, Waste to Taste, um, and that is actually within the church itself. But Waste to Taste find themselves doing a lot of work with with um, the disenfranchised in the Cowley area, and they do. A, a sterling, sterling job. Um, there is the cafe, and people obviously come into the cafe, and and, and they sit and they talk, and you know, and they congregate and, and do the things that people do um, within a cafe. But there is also a strong element of waste of taste, whereby they are relating to people who who have who have very little money. Um, many of them um, are homeless. Um, many of them are unemployed. There, there are relationships that Waste to Taste have within the Cowley community. Some of them are, are very, very important relationships, relationships that have been formed over, over years. I think that's, that's where church is now moving to. I mean, church has been, should have been like that many years ago, and perhaps for many churches, it has been like that. But, but the COVID issue has reinforced how important it is for us to actually develop and cultivate relationships from outside of our four walls, um, to be Jesus with others beyond the building. Because the, the door has, has opened slightly, um, I think it is, abs it is so important that, that churches, you know, pastors, um, leaders take, take advantage of this opportunity. Um, and we can do that in, in, in so many different ways. Yes, you know, if, if we're preachers, we, we can preach about the importance of, of justice and how justice is embodied in the character of God um, in, its, in its totality. We, we can um, um, find you know, accessible books around and about racial justice, which you know, we, we can share um, together, uh, and we can have kind of Bible studies and, 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 and reflections to, to pick up some of the major themes that might run through the particular book that we're reflecting on. Um, I think somehow, somehow, we need to take advantage of the door that has opened. Um, somehow, we need to start to say to people that racism is a sin 
And I think also it is really important that we find a theological rationale for, for, for talking about the importance of racial justice and condemning all forms of racial injustice. I, I can't remember a time like this when, when the, the press and the, the church and you know, um, society um, has been waxing lyrical about justice. I, I can't remember a time when, when people have actually phoned me and, and, and emailed and so on and so forth and said, look, you know, what's going on in society? How can we make a contribution? How can we make a, how can we make a difference? How can we mitigate against the stuff, the racial injustice that's going on? I can't remember a time when people have said to me, my eyes are beginning to open in the ways in which they are. Um, maybe, maybe there is some sort of organic movement that's taking place. I really don't know, but what I do sense and perceive is God is speaking and the God of justice is speaking um, and the God of justice might just be saying to Baptist um, and other denominations get on board get on board start to tell others that this is wrong and encourage your churches to embrace issues around justice not least um, the importance of racial justice.